we have radar activation where the radar is beginning to search for the ground. Once the radar locks on the ground and inside is about one kilometer above the surface, the lander will separate from the back shell and begin terminal descent using its 12 altitude convergence. The radar has locked on the ground. Yes. Standing by for lander separation. Carrier interruption on Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo. Lander separation commanded. Altitude 600 meters. Gravity turn. Altitude 400 meters. We're getting there. 300 meters. 200 meters. 80 meters. 60 meters. 50 meters. Constant velocity. 37 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters, 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. to the camera over in Times Square. Boy, people are weathering the rain to see this. <laughs> they can't help. This thing has a lot more to do, though. Uh, it's there's a lot more to, to go on both today and the, and the days that follow before the science can begin. But you know, just getting a, a vehicle on from Earth to the surface of Mars is no mean feat. And, and Rob, could you talk about that? I mean, just the mere accomplishment here that we're seeing. It, it's you have to understand that this 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 vehicle is very it's very complicated. Um, it uses 12 engines. Each of those engines are pulsed 10 times a second, producing these little tiny uh, impulses, almost like little bullets that keep the vehicle uh, going at a constant velocity as it, as it approaches the ground and still going o over five miles an hour. So those legs feel a fair amount of crush. We still don't know the state of the vehicle right now. We need to look to make sure there are no rocks nearby. The solar panels have to, are, will be in just, in just a few uh, in about five to ten minutes, we'll begin to open up. They have to waiting for the dust to settle because the dust were, was certainly a lot of dust being lifted in the air around the vehicle right now, which is now just settling. So we're standing by after touchdown. It waits um, a, a couple of minutes to give us an X-band beep. And so we are standing by for that. It's a communication that comes directly to Earth from InSight. Yes. Um, and, and it goes uh, uh, to, to the deep space, space network. There's also something that might be happening now, if we're very lucky, uh, InSight might be able to relay uh, a, an image or a parcel image taken just a few, a couple of minutes after landing. So I'm, I'm standing by hoping to see that. But if that doesn't happen, we'll certainly get more images later uh, in our Odyssey Pass in well, about five hours. We see Bruce Banner. Waiting for it. They're, 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 they're I, I don't for, know if they see it yet. They're waiting. That's that's Justin Mackey and Bruce Banner uh, looking carefully at the cameras to see what they might see. Uh, they're now, waiting for the image to come back. So this is the first image from Insight itself. Insight Correct. is taking a picture with one yes. of its two cameras. Yes. It's probably a uh, view of what's directly in front yes. of the spacecraft. 
road, right yes. in front of the lander. This is a camera that it would be using to figure out, is this a good space? Exactly. Is it a good place to put down our instruments? So it is going to take an image and send that image to the Marcos. The Marcos, in turn, will relay it back down to Earth. That's correct. They got it. Oh, no. Let's, let's, let's just wait. Let's see what they saw. There it is. Whoa, wow. Wow. So it's great. I don't see a it's lot great. of. Uh, I don't see a lot of. Uh... Let's explain that image. Now this image has a dust cover on top of it. Video com. We have so lost the signal for Marco. You can see potentially a lot of. Uh, so, uh, radio uh, science a lot reports. Of debris that might be uh, on the camera. For UHF. So we don't know what I'm looking Thank at. Thank you, like, everybody on Video Com. Right. Yeah. Yay, Marco. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, there it is. You can see a better view. You can see that really is debris. And there is the horizon back there, uh, the bluish sky. Uh, um, that's part of the lander deck on the front left. Um, I can't take out, but it looks like there's not a lot of rocks in the field of view. But those dots you see there are very likely to be dust particles on the, on the lens, the dust cover, the dust which cover. will be removed. After and we'll and get another shot yes. later on. Yes, um, and a amazing. better, clearer view after the dust cutter is removed. So, um, it, uh, insights. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 CubeSats relay communications job is done. They're now flying on. They're now taking pictures back of, toward Mars. Uh, uh, hopefully, MRO, which flew overhead, might have been lucky enough to capture the descent of this InSight lander on its, under its parachute. Uh, while, was, while, while this was going on, it, MRO was flying overhead recording the data, uh, um, like a, also monitoring the tra transactions and recording every bit of signal it could. And, but it also had the ability to take a picture. And maybe we'll, like we did with, with uh, both Phoenix and later for Curiosity rover, we might be able to see the parachute inflated that as well. That would be fantastic. We are standing by now for that X-band beat. Yes. Insight phoning home saying, I'm here. System based on inside court, the DSN and expand. Radio science reports expand carrier detected. DSN and expand radio science have acquired the expand touchdown. Copy that, thank you. Flawless. Perfect. Flawless. We've got the beep. We've. Uh, this was perfect case scenario. This is book. this is what we really hoped and imagined in our mind's eye. Uh, although we spend most of our looking, visualizing all these bad things can happen. <laughs> That's um, and sometimes things work out in your favor, and we'll look very carefully at the data to see what might have, uh, how well it went. Um, it, it, but it certainly looked like it was a very successful and perfect landing. We'll have to see um, as we get more data. Um, how well things go, and right, and and, and as the uh, as the vehicle proceeds, the solar panels will be deployed. Hopefully, there's no we're not on a tilt. It doesn't look like we are, but um, from the image, but um, the solar panels will be deployed safely. We hope, and we'll get confirmation of that around five o'clock uh, local time here in, in, a, in about four hour, four and a half hours, five hours from now. And, and this is such a difficult feat in that. Because of the one-way light time, there is no way that any of these engineers could possibly control the vehicle. No. It all has to be done in commands and software. It's, we have to train it to do this work on its own. Uh, radio Science reports nominal carrier 30 seconds past the first acquisition. So we're all nominal on the surface. 
So the vehicle is completely nominal, reported nominal. Uh, it is, uh, it's happy. The lander is not complaining. Um, we, have a, we had a way to tell us if it was unhappy, uh -huh. uh, and it wasn't. It's not unhappy. It's, quite, it's, it's, uh, it's in a normal mode, uh, and so it's going to chug along for the rest, of the rest of the afternoon on Mars and finish the activities. All right. Well, Rob, I know you're anxious to get in and yes. congratulate yes, the am. crew. Thank you so much for Thank sitting you. here Thank and helping so us out it explain EDL. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll let you go and go congratulate your friends. Thank you. All right. Take care. on Inside Ops, Octo Loop recording completed at 20.04.34.